Yeah, back on the Sportsman Zone and we turn our attention to football and specifically the UEFA Champions League. Match day six and the group stage ended a short while ago at the Signal Iduna Park. Borussia Dortmund welcomed French champions PSG. The hosts were already guaranteed progression to the round of 16, while PSG knew any result other than a win would remove their destiny from their own hands. Let's see how it unfolded. PSG have been uh, profligate. They've not tested Koval enough. Now they might. This is Colin Moani getting in, and Koval was ready. Just uh, one minute added, I think. That's what the board said. In it comes, and there is Hummels! And he's missed the target. Yeah. Adi Amy. The onus is on themselves. Brandt has a go, Donnarumma parries, and it's out to Bino Gittens, who slips, untimely. Marquinhos to Hakimi. Hakimi took a risk, and he's been robbed now by Ben Sabaini. It breaks for Fulcrook. Fulcrook tees up Adi Amy! And Borussia Dortmund make the breakthrough! Problems for PSG now. But watch Ashraf Hakimi when he comes towards the ball here. It's a clumsy pass. I think he knocks back. There is too heavy. And then there he gets caught. Now full crew's miles on site. He's sitting there waiting. And then he just rolls it into the path of Adiyami this time. Well, here we go. Lee finds Mbappe, who's just peeled out to the left flank. Barkala charges into the middle where Colin Moani is already. And Mbappe decides he does it by himself. Turned back by Barkala. Now it's Zayel Emery! And it's 1-1! That's where I think Mbappe can operate from and be at his most dangerous. I really do tonight. If he drifts wide like this and he gets the chance to run at people, he stands them up, slows them down and then goes. And nobody can live with the guy. No one can even get close. He drags four yellow shirts to the ball. I'm seeing this in Champions League group qualification many, many times. It can often come right down to the last few moments. Hakimi has got it through and it looked as though Mbappe was on. And Mbappe has scored! And PSG have taken the lead! They've turned it round! He's absolutely shattered. Is Might that, have been a knock as well. Is that offside? Is it, oh, goodness me, how tight is that? The left knee. The, no, the right knee, yeah. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Uh, you know, that little graphic, uh, I think it was tighter than that. Yeah. They were behind, Newcastle were in front. It was all going wrong. But all's well that ends well, we think. And surely it will for Paris Saint-Germain. Yeah, PSG still, well, PSG doing just enough. Let's stay with Group F for the moment, though, at St. James's Park. Newcastle hosted AC Milan. Both teams enter the contest knowing a win could potentially see them progressing to the last 16. Let's have a look at the highlights. That's a beautiful ball. It's a good take by Trippier, too. And that's a good ball into Joel Linton, who steers it towards goal, and somehow it's cleared off the line brilliantly by Bukayo Tomori. They have to win and hope that PSG lose. Newcastle have to win. Here is Leal, and that's their first chance, and the first chance that Rafael Leal has spurned. Gordon has picked up a pocket of space here, and there is space to run into, and this is Lewis Miley, and this is Joel Linton! It's a thumper! But when he scored on Sunday at Tottenham, it meant very little. This one means everything, or could do. So much space for Gordon to run into. Miley intelligent enough to set it back for Joel Linton. And there ain't no goalkeeper in the world that's stopping that. Chipped in towards the penalty spot to Mori, and then it comes into the six yard box. And Christian Pulisic tucks it home. Christian Pulisic, who recently scored in the game against Frosinone. 
And they're just checking here for offside against Rafael Leal. The ball was tucked back into the path of uh, Tamori. He mishit it. Came back to Olivier Giroud. Wilson goes trotting into the centre. Isaac. Now Bruno Guimaraes encouraged to shoot. He hits the crossbar after a brilliant save from Mike Magnol. That was a bit of magic from Mike. Leal to his left. Okafor. Chukwueze! Moments after coming off the bench, Kuwezi, who was a star in the Champions League for Villarreal, just a few short months ago, has come up with another telling moment in this competition. Jovic is leading the charge, Okafor is to his left, Tomori is to his right, it's for Kayo Tomori, and they've hit the post again. Well, the whistle's gone, and the referee didn't really make that abundantly clear to everyone. But the game has gone for Newcastle United as well. It is last year's semi-finalists who rally to earn themselves a place in the Europa League after Christmas. Yeah, any wandering hole, Newcastle will not be in Europe following Christmas. Borussia Dortmund and PSG qualify from Group F to the round of 16 of the UEFA Champions League. AC Milan will be in the Europa League. Newcastle say goodbye for this season. Joining us now to recap the action is our football analyst, Brent Sancho. And you know what, Brent? Um, Newcastle's Champions League campaign promised so much they had a great start um, fell away had a great start tonight against AC Milan and uh, yeah Milan turning it around and although they themselves did not qualify for the round of 16 they remain in Europe and it's PSG and Borussia Dortmund who are going through to the last 16 yeah, I think Newcastle will, uh, of course, consider themselves very unlucky, as you rightfully said, they did start well. You know, but you might have to turn your mind back to that controversial call with Mbappe in their last fixture against PSG in a, in, a, in a penalty that I thought certainly was not a penalty and that result going against them. And then again, of course, tonight going ahead uh, and not being able to finish the business at St. James's Park, uh, a team that has been decimated with injuries, uh, have had their struggles as it relates to fixture uh, of course, uh, compilation and, and having a, a log ahead of fixtures, they would think that they, they, they've really been hard done in this uh, format of it, uh, at least deserving of uh, a European place in the Europa League, but completely out of it. And, and you really have to feel sorry for Eddie Howe and his troops. Yeah, the, 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 the winning goal for um, AC Milan today, Brent, I had a look at it and I just wondered if a challenge should have come in midfield. As a defender yourself, um, maybe if we could get the play going back uh, well ahead of this. When AC Milan won the ball in the middle of the park, I thought maybe a challenge should have come in. It didn't and it made life very easy for AC Milan from there. Yeah, I wondered as well, yeah, maybe a challenge could have come in, but I, I looked at that uh, Newcastle team in and around the 60th minute. They looked right a bit there, leg -weary. Brent. Yeah, they, they looked a bit leg weary, and, and I think fatigue stepped in, um, and, and of course, playing in transition and, and going for goals and trying to win the fixture, uh, they left themselves exposed, and maybe a tackle could have come in, tired minds, tired legs, couldn't get there on time. Uh, and I think a lot of that transpired. It was a lot of. Uh, what you, what you call last grasp football was played from Newcastle, desperate to get a result. Uh, and yes, you could you could pinpoint that particular moment to put it in a tackle. But when when you're tired, both mentally and physically, you know you just can't think through. A Newcastle, uh, a team that, that looked very very tired from minute 60 onwards, um, really struggled and, and tried everything to, to try to get back in the game. Yeah, and PSG doing just enough to get through to the last 16. Borussia Dortmund had already secured their place and PSG really holding on today to get the point that they ultimately needed to get through. You know, you, you turn your mind back a couple of years ago and, and the question really is, when would PSG win a Champions League? Mm. And look at the, look, they, they now look a shadow of themselves, a, a team that had the, the stars like Neymar and Messi and I could go on and on and champagne football as they call it they were playing but now you know they've really struggled even domestically i don't think they've looked 
uh, comfortable in their skin in their skin Luis Enrique is trying his best to make sure that he can get uh, you know the team playing I guess a, a bit more with a bit more grit and bite uh, but they've struggled in this group and again I go back Ricardo I mean I don't mean to keep harping on it but you go back to that result against Newcastle where they got that controversial penalty and if that uh, penalty wasn't given and shouldn't have been given who knows what have happened to PSG and, and, and their progression and the, uh, that they've uh, received today but I mean, kudos to them. They came back from a goal down and, and, and they were able to, to pull a result. But, you, you know, it's it's a team that you look at and you don't really fancy them in the knockout stages because you just don't know if they're going to give you that consistent level of football and quality that you need to go through a Champions League uh, knockout stages. Yeah, how about the group winners then, Borussia Dortmund? Because this was seen as the group of death and they have come through it quite comfortably in the end. Yeah, again, Borussia Dortmund, a, a team that, uh, you know, hung their hat on developing players, uh, what we call a selling club. They, they've been able to produce these sorts of results, haven't they, in Europe? I mean, you know, it's a squad that's, uh, you know, littered with quality and talent, but certainly talent that is harnessed, to, to, is developed to be shipped out to somewhere else. But they always find a collective. And, and when you look at that Dortmund team, uh, they've been very good offensively. Their movement has been exceptional. Well marshaled at the back by, by old man Hummels. Uh, and, and they've done a good job in the group stages. They've always been tough in the group stages. There's no doubt about that, the Dortmund. Uh, and even when they go into the knockout stages, because they, they believe in the philosophy and the way that they, they should be approaching football games. And they do that every time Champions League comes around. And you have to give them credit. You're right, because this was a difficult group. And what made this group difficult, Ricardo, it's because Newcastle came to life. I mean, I I didn't expect Newcastle to still have an opportunity to go into the next round come the final set of games, but they did and they were there. Uh, so credit to Dortmund and what they've been able to achieve. Yeah, um, one question for you, Brent, because there were some top draw goals today. Um, I saw several very, very fine strikes in, in several of the matches today. I quite like the Joel Linton strike. Which was your favorite on the day? Yeah, I'm there with you. I, 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 because Linton is uh, the type of player that uh, he doesn't score easy goals, does he? He's, uh, <laughs> he's scored a, an absolute beauty. Oh, that was sweet. That was sweet. Yeah, right. it was yeah. sweet. You know, you felt at that moment there that they, they could probably push on and do more. Um, but for some reason, I, as I said, they're, really, they're so unfortunate, this Newcastle team. You, you, you have to, as a neutral, you really have to like what they, they offer. But uh, they just came up short. But uh, a beautiful strike by Linton. All this is... How many times we've seen, uh, you know, shots like that maroon over the bar, but uh, well kept, well released, good technical ability and an excellent strike. Yeah, excellent strike indeed. Now in one of the day's early encounters, champions Manchester City already guaranteed top spot in Group G, travelled to Serbia to take on Red Star Belgrade and we have those highlights. Das Nunes. Hamilton, what a start, Micah Hamilton just 20 years of age, so much confidence, so much ability, he was perfectly teed up, he was afforded far too much room, he was shepherded wide by Dragovic, Bob, Allowed to go on and gone a long way and to roll in his first senior goal for Manchester City. City's development player of the year claims their second goal of the evening. Delightfully done. Mamadou Sissou. Bukari. And Huang has put the ball in the back of the net, having withdrawn Maggio Kovacic and punished further. Bukhari afforded far too much room. Bernardo Silva. Hamilton. Hamilton dragged back. Manchester City get the penalty. It's Phillips that should settle it. In by Huang. Delivery's good. 
Katai another who got his first goal of the season domestically at the weekend. Given so much freedom. Terrific delivery by Huang. Yeah, not the Manchester City lineup that we see week in, week out in the Premier League or the UEFA Champions League. Almost unrecognizable, but they get the job done against Red Star Belgrade. Brilliant job coming from City. One of two teams to finish the group stage of this season's Champions League with maximum 18 points. The other team being Real Madrid. And Brent, a quick word on the Manchester City performance today, but how they have efficiently gone through this entire group stage of the Champions League as well. Well, allow me for a brief, brief second to get on my Manchester City soup box for a minute. I mean, first of all, the type of players that they've been able to produce. We talk a lot about how much money they spend. When you look at the likes of the, the, the Palmers and the Sancho's that have already they sold and they pushed on, the Lewis, the Hamilton that we saw Saturday, Bob as well scoring that terrific goal, and Phil Foden who's passed through the ranks. They have done an exceptional job as a football club to be able to develop that sort of talent and consistently produce that type of talent. And credit to Phillips as well, a player that has not seen a lot of time, came in and gave a very solid performance today for City. It shows that the culture and the ethos of that football club is right where it needs to be. So that's me on my soapbox and, and, and park that to one side. But yes, they've been extremely efficient throughout, not less than what you expect. And I don't know if the viewers understand how difficult it is in sports to keep a consistent level, a high level of performances and results in team sport. It is, it is very, very difficult, but Mr. Pep Guardiola makes it look so, so easy. Yeah, he certainly does make it look easy and Manchester City the same. So another efficient performance from them. All right, let's just quickly have a look at the results um, from today, the um, final match day in the UEFA Champions League. Yeah, here we go. So Manchester City 3-2 over Red Star, Belgrade, RB Leipzig 2-1 over Young Boys, Barcelona losing to Antwerp by three goals to two, Atletico Madrid 2-0 over Lazio, Celtic 2-1 over Feyenoord, Dortmund 1-1 with PSG, FC Porto 5-3 over Shakhtar Donetsk and AC Milan 2-1 over Newcastle and that brings us to the final 16 for this season's UEFA Champions League. Here we go, Arsenal, Bayern Munich, Real Sociedad, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Borussia, Dortmund, Manchester City and Barcelona. Uh, those were the group winners and also qualifying PSV, Eindhoven, Copenhagen, Inter Milan, Napoli, Lazio, PSG, RB Leipzig and Porto. Notice that there is no Manchester United on that list, but of course we knew that from yesterday. Brent, there is the final 16. What do you make of it? It makes absolutely no sense. I ask you um, if there are any shocks because we all know what the shock is and maybe it isn't even a shock. Um, but what do you make of the last 16? I think basically as we expected, of course, uh, last year's semi-finalist AC Milan not being in it. And, and no, Ricardo, I'm not going to talk about Manchester United Thank because you. I expected them to be out of it uh, because I know they didn't have uh, the quality to get into the, that stage of it. Uh, I think for me, though, moving forward, you know, I normally don't like to make these out there predictions, but it's very hard to see past Real Madrid uh, and what they offer in winning this. Of course, Manchester City uh, will follow a close second, but... Uh, I'd love to see a Real Madrid-Manchester City final because I think those two teams have shown in the group stages that they are both, uh, both probably head and shoulders above most of the others in that uh, competition. Yeah, yeah, sounds like a blockbuster Champions League final to me. Um, Brent Sancho, when you spoke about Manchester City, you made Mariah smile. She was smiling from ear to ear. And thank you for not um, taking the bait from Ricardo when all he wants to talk about is Manchester United. Thank I, you so much. I actually <laughs> don't want to talk about Manchester United. I wish you would never have to mention them. That would give me peace at night. Let's take a break. Ren Sancho, thanks very much. We'll chat again thanks, soon. Chris. Thank you.